welcome to this video. Hopefully this is only going to be a short one, but I wanted to go through my reading stats for 2021 since we are heading into a new year and I thought it'd be fun just to go through them. I really like other people's reading stats videos. I love seeing like the little details of things they've read. So I am basically using my reading journal and story graph to see what my sort of reading habits are and to track my reading habits. I also use Goodreads, but um, I'm wanting to transition to Storygraph once it kind of becomes more, um, I guess, finished. <laughs> it's still not com like a complete, completely finished app, um, and it's still not super, super popular. But so I use both Goodreads and Storygraph, but I tend to look at the sort of stats on Storygraph more. Um, and I use my own reading journal that I've made to track like pages, star ratings and stuff as well. So I have them both, I have a physical copy and my electronic copy. I don't use spreadsheets like Excel because I don't know how to use Excel. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't use those. But let's just go through all the stats that I've tra keep kept track of this year. Um, so as of now, which the date for me today is the uh 29th of december and i have read 61 books i'm almost finished on my 62nd book um so i'm including that in the stats even though it's not totally finished i'm so close to the end so i already know what star rating i want to give it um and i basically yeah i'm including it in so by the end of 2021 i will have read 62 books which is 10 more books than my goal my goal was 52 so that's pretty cool i'm pretty happy about that um, the book I'm currently finishing is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon, and it's brilliant. It's going to be a four star for me. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting to see how my reading splits up. So for some of this, it's just going to be stats that I've recorded myself, and some of it will be, um, I'll put on um, screenshots of my story graph. Um, so in terms of the type of books I've read, um, out of the 62, 43 were fiction, 6 were non-fiction, 7 were poetry books, and uh, 5 were what I would call other. So other is graphic novels, manga, um, any sort of book that's like, I don't know, like a cookbook maybe, I don't know if I count that as, as other. Um, and poetry should be classed as non-fiction I suppose, but I, I rank poetry separately. Um, and in non-fiction, I included The Marriage of Heaven and Hell by William Blake, which even though it's kind of poetic in its writing, it's more a piece of, it's like an essay more than anything, so that goes into the non-fiction category. Um, I've, I'm not surprised by that divide. I, I know I don't read a lot of non-fiction. I will probably j hope to read a little bit more next year, um, but I do prefer fiction, I prefer to be lost in a story and have some escapism. The total number of pages I've read uh, is 13,983. So I should hopefully put that number on the screen because when I say it out loud it's hard to picture the number. My average pages were 1,165.25 pages. Um, my average star rating is 3.89 out of 5. Um, that's pretty high. I feel like this year um, I've rated books a lot higher or I've read books that um, I've really enjoyed a lot more of. I've had very few um, poorly rated books. Like, book, book for me, a poor rating is two stars or below, um, or two point five stars and below. Because I think three stars or two point five stars is like middle, so that's like you know aggressively average, like halfway between zero and five stars. Um, and three stars is pretty good. Enjoyed it. And three and a half is like yeah, I really liked it. And four stars is really really good. And five stars is like a favorite or phenomenal for me. Um, it's not a very comprehensive star rating system, but it's it's what I do. I usually just go on feeling. I don't have a strict system. I just, how do I feel about this book? And that's how I rate it. I, I think Storygraph have a chart for star ratings. So hopefully I put that up. Um, so, one thing that interested me from Storygraph is looking at, like, they have, like, pie charts for, like, your mood, your pace, um, reading paces, and, like, what the books are rated as being fast pace, medium pace, slow pace, so the types of books you read, um, also your most read genres, and I found that to be quite interesting. So, my, according to Storygraph, my most read genre is horror, 
um, which is not really that surprising, but the books that he puts in horror are a little bit surprising. So for example, um, there are books that you expect, like The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum, obviously horror, it's horrific. <laughs> it's not horror in the sense that it's like supernatural horror, it's like just true crime, it's a terrible horror. Um, the Loop horror, uh, American Psycho, yep, yep. Um, a Diary of Blood was in that, and I thought that was more like, it was more like a, um, a romance, in a, in a more like a um, commentary on abusive relationships sort of romance, not like a, ooh, this is romantic romance. But it's classed as horror, and I guess it is a retelling of Dracula's Wives, but it, it's not, it wasn't, it was horrific in its um, portrayal of emotional abuse, but not horrific in terms of your sort of traditional horror. So I was kind of surprised about some of the books it puts in, that were put into this. For example, Earthlings by Sayaka Murata is counted as horror, apparently. So according to Storygraph, um, out of the 62 books I read, 18 were horror. Um, and I noticed on Storygraph in their genre section that they repeat books. So a book that might be in horror, but might also be in fantasy or LGBTQIA+. Yeah. So my most read genres are horror with 18 books, fantasy, 14 books. Um, then it goes classic, science fiction, and literary, and then poetry. Um, but the books are repeated, so rather than go through every book in each one, it doesn't really matter because one book could be in all the categories. Um, but it's interesting to see fantasy to be my second most read genre, because uh, it even included Animal Farm in fantasy, and I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't call Animal Farm a fantasy novel. I guess it has fantastical elements with talking animals, but whatever. It's just interesting to see how they split it up. Um, I'm not surprised that my most read genre is horror, to be honest, though, because that is my <laughs> go-to, just dark and disturbing. Um, apparently, my reading mood is reflective, dark, and challenging. So I read the most common mood of the books I read was reflective, dark, and challenging. Um, also not surprised to me, I do like, I have a preference for disturbing, um, upsetting, books than I do for like nice happy books <laughs> and this is what I like so which sounds like a terrible thing to say but it, it is I like books that are, are deeply emotionally unsettling or, or upsetting like whatever that says about me I'm okay with it uh, my reading pace tends to be slower so I tend to read slower paced books apparently um, uh, and medium paced books to me it was weird as well because sometimes I'll rate a book on Storygraph as being fast paced and then I'll see that it's actually, it's actual sort of um, rating, I guess, pace rating is, would be like slow paced or something. So that's, I guess that's what whoever put the book on Storygraph um, felt it was or what it's listed as. Um, so some books that I feel are really fast paced are actually slow paced or whatever. Um, I most commonly read books that are under 300 pages. I'm not surprised by that. I have big book fear, I feel super intimidated by big books and I'm trying to overcome that because like, one of my reading goals is to read Crime and Punishment. I don't even know if I even said that in my reading goals for 2022 but I really really want to read Crime and Punishment um, because Crime and Punishment is a book that inspired one of my favourite games of all time which is Silent Hill 2 so I really 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 want to read it. <laughs> uh, but Russian classics, Thick Boy, I don't, yeah. It, I'm intimidated. I've only just got around to reading it after having it on my shelf for four years and it's t I'm taking my time. But maybe I'll break through the barrier and read thick books and um, books that are more than 300 pages <laughs> um, next year. My most read author was Octavia Butler because this year I read six books by Octavia Butler um, so I'm not surprised. I usually read, don't stick to an author, but one of my sort of goals is to read all of her uh, bibliography. So I'm not surprised that I've read a lot of books by her this year. It's really strange because I don't have a favourite author. I have favourite books. Um, but I haven't found an author that I'm like, yes, everything you write just speaks to me and I love everything you write. Even though there's authors like Octavia Butler that I have a lot of love and respect for, I wouldn't call her my favourite author. So I'm hoping that maybe I find an author someday that I can read all their work and feel a lot of love for them and be able to call them my favourite author. Because my favourite, my like top three favourite books are um, The Colour Purple, A Little Life and The Picture of Dorian Gray. I have three pictures on my wall um, of prints of the book covers on recycled encyclopedia pages. 
Um, and those are my top three. Also Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid, but of all time, at the moment, <laughs> they're my top three. That could change though, you never know. It even has a graph on here, on story graph, of like my sort of reading habits, like how many books I read per month, or how many pages I read per month. And you can see it going up and down. And for me, you can see that in summer, it, it dips. Because <laughs> I had no time over summer, I moved house and it was just, and I, life was just busy and a mess and it was tiring. So it kind of dipped and then it picked up again towards the end of the year. Um, you can see where I've hit sort of slumps as well, where like in March I just read, I don't even know how many books I read in March. Um, I read two books in March, so I just, my motivation for reading got me up and down. Um, but this end of the year has consistently kind of gone up. So I'm quite, I'm impressed by that, I'm okay with that. Also this year, I think I DNF'd two books. I DNF'd Joyful Environmentalism, which I made a review about, kind of a ranty review, but I did. Um, and I also DNF'd Vagabonds by Hao Jing Fang, I think it is. Um, and I'm actually, I think I'm selling that book. Um, but I just, it just wasn't for me. It's not a bad book, it just wasn't for me. And they're the books that I DNF'd. I don't think I DNF'd any other books this year. Out of all the books I read, I, I tried to read as many um, authors of colour that I can because it's really important to me to have a diverse reading taste and I feel like I want to read a lot of books by a lot of uh, people from different cultures and heritages 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 um, and I read 32 books by authors of colour so just over half of my reading were books written by um, uh, authors of colour yeah like not um yeah and I was quite impressed with that I felt happy with that because that's really important to me um, so I'm pleased that I had literally 50, like a little bit more than 50-50 kind of um, sort of split in my reading. I haven't listed like all the um, ethnicities or anything of the authors, just whether they were um, an author of colour. So yeah, I think that's most of my reading stats. I know that last year, I think I, don't, I did think I read, I think I read like 26 books last year, but I only got back into reading last summer. Last summer? Yeah, last summer, 2020 summer. The, honestly, this year is just a blur in my mind, and I know this video is probably super messy, and I'm not really looking at the camera because I'm trying to read my stats. So <laughs> it's it's uh, probably not the best video in the world, but it, it's something. When I when I sort of look over my um, my goals for 2021, I haven't massively I didn't finish them all, but I did quite a lot. Like my goals for 2021 were to read 52 books, and I've exceeded that. It was to read five. Um, psychotherapy books. I read Two for Pleasure, um, which was Love's Executioner, which I made a review about, and I read um, On Becoming a Person by Carl Rogers from cover to cover, even though it's a book I knew quite well from my studies. Um, but I did also read like five books for my master's degree um, in psychotherapy, but um, I didn't count them because I wasn't reading them for pleasure, I was reading them for necessity for my work. So technically I didn't achieve that goal. I wanted to read one work of Shakespeare, and I did. I read Shakespeare's sonnets, and I did not enjoy them. Um, I wanted to read a Murakami novel, and I did. I read Kafka on the Shore, and I thought it was great. I gave it four stars, I think. Um, I wanted to read nine Caribbean books, like nine of the books from my Caribbean Caribbean literature haul, um, which I can leave a card for. And how many did I read in the end? I think in the end, I read... I only read two from the nine books that I hauled, um, but I have read other pieces of Caribbean literature. Um, so I read, I actually, so the books I did read from that haul were Wages Paid, Wages Paid by James Carnegie, which is a phenomenal book. I did a review about it. And I read Lucy by Jamaica Kin Kin Kincaid, which is one of my favorite books of the year. Um, but I didn't read any other books from that, from that list, but I have read other, um, Car books by Caribbean authors or Caribbean books but they just went on this in this hall um, I wanted to read Lolita and I did and that was an interesting book <laughs> uh, I don't know why I just really wanted to read it I feel like every year I do put a book that I just want to read that I've not read and it's just a famous book um, I wanted to read two books by James Baldwin I only read one I, I read um, his poetry collection T Jimmy's Blues um, which I enjoyed um, one of my goals was to read Vagabonds by Hao Jing Fang, which was like a um, sci-fi challenge for me because I don't really read sci-fi or intentionally read sci-fi. Um, 
like some books are sci-fi like Octavia Butler's works are sci-fi but I don't read like hardcore hardcore sci-fi um, so I picked up this book really wanted to read it um, and I did left it in the end so technically that challenge was cancelled because I did try I got halfway and then I just it was a really big book and I just didn't want to read anymore one of my goals is to finish the Iliad, which you can see right here. Um, I didn't finish the Iliad. I'm still about 100 pages in or something. I really wanted to finish it, I just lost motivation to read it. Um, maybe next year. I think I need, it's something you need to sit down, because I like to annotate it and really absorb it, because I love um, Greek mythology and Greek history. So I think I want to sit down properly and read it all. My other goal was to read all of Octavia Butler's work, um, all of her um, fiction work. Um, and I didn't finish that, but I did read six of her work this year, and I read, um, last year I read, how many did I read last year? I read a few last year as well. So I've only got five of her books left, and she had quite a lot. Let me count how many books she had. So I've read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've read nine of her work, <laughs> um, and I only have five left. So I've done pretty good on that challenge. I didn't finish it, but I did pretty good. And my laptop is starting to sound like it's going to take off again. It's super noisy. But I think that's all my stats that I'm going to share. It's really fun keeping track of your reading. Obviously, I use a read. I like my favorite way of keeping track is my reading journal. My reading journal this year wasn't my favorite. Um, I just started it last year, um, and I wasn't really putting much care into it but I love journaling so my new reading journal for 2022 so I finished this one is um beautiful I set it up in like I don't know October or something or November and it's just beautiful and I love it and I don't know whether I'll share it or not because it's just mine <laughs> but it's I love it so I'm excited to start that one and track all my reading and check how many days I read for and stuff like that um so I pretty much read every day and tracking my um, reading habits digitally on Storygraph and Goodreads as well. Yeah, so I think that's it. I think this video ended up being longer than I wanted it to be. <laughs> I just ramble, blah. But anyway, um, happy reading. Hope everyone else has had a successful reading year, whatever that means for you, whether that's reading one book or a hundred books. I'm definitely not at a hundred books. <laughs> um, but yeah, happy reading in 2022 as well. And I'll see you around.